All right, hello everybody, welcome back. We're in Unit 2, Section 4, Earth's Motion and Tilt. So make sure that you're paying attention and doing what you need to do as we go about here. So here's our objective. Students will be able to explain how Earth's rotation and revolution affect its shape and is related to the seasons as we go about here. So this is from 2013. Again, I'm in the way, sorry. I should have moved that over. Um, it is summer in the Northern Hemisphere, which statement is true? And um, you should be able to talk about this, about um, summer and the Northern Hemisphere, because we live in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, here's from 2019, number one, some constellations are more prominent in the night sky in North Carolina in winter, while other constellations are more prominent in the night sky in summer, which best explains why this occurs. So again, we're, we're kind of getting into seasons in this one. And then from 2019, number five, so we've got three questions to look at today. Uh, which of these statements best explains the shape of the Earth? Um, and it talks about the, ro notice there's two questions that start off with rotation, and there's two questions that start off with revolution. And then the second part basically repeats. The first two talk about Earth has a greater circumference around the equator than around the prime meridian, and then C and D say the opposite has a greater circumference around the prime meridian than around the equator. So knowing what those are and where they are, we've talked about this already, but this should be a little bit of review. But I don't know that, let me go back for a second. I don't know that this is in your notes all that well. And it's questions like this that I find as a teacher to actually be pretty helpful, where I'm like, you know, I don't know if we have this spelled out exactly in your notes. And it may be worth when we get all this done to get y'all to write this down in your notes somewhere and just make sure that you know this. Um, and so I always find questions like this helpful because it takes a concept and it just summarizes it very quickly um, for you. So what are some things we should know about the structure of the earth? And so going back to the ancient Greeks, and I'm going to mispronounce his name here, but our Eratosthenes, I believe is how you say his name, Eratosthenes, determined that the Earth's circumference was around 46,250 kilometers. He was off by a little bit. But what we find is that at the equator, which is that belt line, and again, I'm going to turn my laser pointer on because I think that might be helpful. This belt line, the equator, the Earth actually bulges out a little bit. So as the Earth spins on its axis, as it rotates every day, it actually kind of squashes a little bit. So the Earth is a little, it's not exact, it's not a perfect sphere. It, it bulges out. So you can think of it almost like a football where, you know, it's going to be a little bit out. It's not quite that extreme, but it's a little bit thicker this way than it is north to south along the prime meridian. So there's kind of the answer to our question there, right? Okay. Um, at the poles, it bulges out about 40,007 kilometers is what we find. So it is an oblate spheroid. Um, spherical, it's slightly flattened at the poles. It bulges at the equator. So there, there's your, there it is. It's, it's in your notes. Okay. I was a bit worried about that. So as Earth rotates, the sphere is distorted by centripetal force. So as the Earth spins, it's going to bulge out a little bit causes objects to move outward from the center and it's greatest at the equator. So again, just to kind of show you the distance, equatorial diameter is 12.756 kilometers, whereas the polar diameter is 12.714 kilometers or 12,000 rather. So um, this is not quite, a, it's, it's longer this way than it is this way. Not by much, but by some. And the Earth is tilted on an axis, so we do believe that, you know, that we do have this imaginary axis that runs this way, and it is 23 and a half degrees to that axis. We're perpendicular to that line. And the Earth rotates or spins on this axis every day, and this is what allows us to have seasons. And of course, we've kind of already said this, but it's worth reviewing. We use a coordinate system of latitude and longitude on the on the planet. Now, some of you seem to kind of ignore this in unit one, so you need to kind of come back and relearn this if you kind of ignored it. But latitude lays flat. These measure distance north and south, but they run east to west. They measure north and south, but they run east to west. They're also called parallels. So that's what your latitudes look like. And here's just another view of latitudes. And we have various ones. The equator is a latitude. We consider that a low latitude. We consider high latitudes to be near the poles. Longitudes measure distance in degrees east and west, but they run north to south. These are also called meridians because we do have one called the prime meridian, which if you remember runs through Greenwich, England. Um, 
that we have there. And that's where, it, I guess that's where it was originally discovered. I, for, I don't know the science behind it, but um, the prime meridian is defined as running through Greenwich, England, and it runs, it measures east to west, but they run north to south. And again, we are on a tilt, so it's, it's actually leading a little bit to the side. And you notice the prime meridian is not, is not actually the one in the front here. It's this one here. It's the one that runs there. I can't exactly trace it very well with my mouse, but there's, there's it is. Okay. Uh, sorry, went too fast. So Earth rotates. Earth rotates on its axis, which means it spins. We know it takes about 24 hours or one day for the Earth to completely rotate around. And that's what gives us our night-day cycle. Of course, we're not sticking straight up and down like it's showing you here. We are at a 23 and a half degree tilt. And we revolve. And when we revolve, we go around the sun. And the revolution of the sun is about 365.25 days a year. And that's why we have a leap year, because every four years, we're kind of adding that back to the calendar. Because if we didn't do that, I guess about every, what, four times 180. So about, what is that? Um, 720 years or so, Christmas would be in the middle of the summer and vice versa. Maybe we should do that. And then the Australians could actually have a winter Christmas as well. But, you know, most civilizations aren't even going to last that long. So that's why we do leap year every four years, just to kind of get the earth back on balance, if you would, with, with what our calendar and our seasons make sense to us. But hopefully you already know what a rotation and a revolution is. Um, so why is there summer and winter? First off, there's the number of daylight hours. Uh, the number, amount of sunlight varies throughout the year. The tilt of the earth means that no two latitudes get the same amount every day. In the summer, we have about 14 hours of sunlight and about 10 of our hours in the winter. So it's, it's very lopsided as opposed to 12 and 12. The other reason why there's summer and winter is the angle of the sun's rays. It's not our proximity to the sun. It's the angle that we're at. So like, for instance, when the southern hemisphere is closer to the sun, for them, it's summer. And for us in the northern hemisphere, it would be winter because this area of effect is much more diluted. And so the sun's rays get spread out over a longer distance and have less impact. We're actually closer to the sun during our winters. But because we're at a steeper angle, we get less direct sunlight. Likewise, um, and again, remember the Earth doesn't go back and forth on its tilt. So when this rotates around the, um, the sun, we'll be closest to the sun there. Okay, so whenever there's more direct sunlight, it hits the Earth. It's their warmer month. So here we see the sunlight hits the southern part. So like Australia here, it's going to be their summer. It's going to be our winter because we're facing away from the sun. Whereas when we're closer to the sun like this, then this is our summer months and the winter is having in the, the southern hemisphere, excuse me, is having their winter as well. So like as I record this, it's September 2024. And what we find here is that um, we're actually just starting into fall. Similarly, in Australia, they're just now starting to come out of winter and begin their spring. So we're starting into our fall. They're starting into their spring. So again, just to kind of show this animation, notice that the tilt of the earth is the same always. It's just where we are relevant. So in the winter, we're farthest away. But then in the summer, we're the closest. We're, we're leaning towards the sun. And again, this kind of represents a circular, but it's not a circle. It's an ellipse, but y'all get the idea. For the purposes of this, it's showing you the angle of the sun and those different months. So let's go over equinoxes and solstices. So equinox, if you did not know, comes from equa meaning equal and nox means night. So this is equal night. You should have the same amount of sunlight as you do daylight. And that's why they're called an equinox. Vernal equinox is the spring equinox, usually happens around March 21st, 22nd. And then we have the autumnal equinox, which happens in the fall, and that's September 21st, 22. So as I'm recording this, in, a couple, in about three weeks, we'll be having the autumn equinox. This gives us 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness, and we'll fill in your chart a little bit more, um, makes a little bit more sense in just a minute. And the sun is directly overhead at the equator with those. 
The solstices come from the words meaning the soul for sun, and stis actually means to stand still. So the idea is that in the summer solstice, which is the longest day of the year for the northern hemisphere, the sun seems to stand still because it's taken so long to go across the sky that day, which is June 21st, 22nd. The sun is directly overhead, 23.5 degrees north of the equator at the Tropic of Cancer. The winter solstice, which is December 21st, 22nd, is the shortest day of the year for the northern hemisphere, but the longest day of the year, I'm sorry, I thought I had that on mute, but the longest day of the year for um, the southern hemisphere. Shortest day for us, longest day for them, and the sun is directly overhead of the Tropic of Capricorn, which is 23 and a half degrees south of the equator. So let's fill in your chart, and this is what it should look like. You can hit pause here, but I'm not going to read it all to you. But again, um, you know, the equinoxes should be about equal, 12 and 12, whereas the summer solstice here in the northern hemisphere, we're going to have the most amount of daylight, maybe as much as 16 hours, whereas with the winter solstice, we're going to have the least amount of sunlight, which is, you know, 8, 9, 10 hours, something like that. And um, again, where is the sun directly overhead? So just to kind of illustrate this again, I thought this was worth looking at. So let's look at these questions from the released items. And uh, you should hit pause. I'll read the question and give you a five countdown and we'll go through. So if it's summer in the northern hemisphere, which statement is true? A, Earth has changed the tilt of its axis by 20 degrees due to its revolution. B, it is winter in the southern hemisphere due to the tilt of Earth's axis. C, it is summer in the southern hemisphere due to the tilt of Earth's axis. Or D, Earth has reached its closest point to the sun due to its revolution. Give you five, four, three, two, one. Should be bravo. It is winter in the southern hemisphere due to the tilt of the Earth's axis. Folks, y'all need to pay attention to these. These will be on your test. I love to, re I love to use released items. From 2019, number one, some constellations are more prominent in the night sky of North Carolina in winter, while other constellations are more prominent in the night sky in summer, which best explains why this occurs? A, because of Earth's rotation on its axis, B, because of the stars revolving around the Earth, C, because of the Earth revolving around the Sun, or D, because of the change in the Berry Center of the Earth. I don't think we've talked about Berry Center this time. Hmm. Anyway, five. Four, three, two, one. The correct answer is Charlie, because of Earth revolving around the sun. We're changing our location. 2019, number five. Which of these statements best explains the shape of the Earth? A, because of its rotation about its axis, the Earth has a greater circumference around the equator than around the prime meridian. B, because of its revolution around the sun, Earth has a greater circumference around the equator than around the prime meridian. C, because of its rotation about its axis, Earth has a greater circumference around the prime meridian than around the equator. Or D, because of its revolution around the sun, Earth has a greater circumference around the prime meridian than around the equator. Now, before I give you a countdown here, let me point out, there's a lot of words there. You need to break it down and break it down quickly. Um, but I will give you a countdown, and then I'm actually going to talk through it before I reveal the answer. So five, four, three, two... One. Okay. So first off, I would focus on the second half of this equation. Notice the first two have the same part. Earth has a greater circumference around the equator than around the prime meridian, or Earth has a greater circumference around the prime meridian than around the Earth equator. So ask yourself, where is the Earth thicker? Is it thicker at the equator or thicker at the prime meridian? Well, hopefully you'll remember we, it was said it was thicker at the equator. So that eliminates Charlie and Delta. A and B are our possibilities. Is it because of our rotation daily about the axis or our revolution yearly around the sun? Well, it's about the rotation around the axis, right? So it should be alpha. So anyway, there's that. I know that's a lot, but folks, pay attention to those things. Those are the questions that I will be putting on your test, and I'll see you soon for the next set of notes.